Hi, Digital Photo B. This is Mr. Roper, and I'm uh, recording a video here to show you a little bit about our very next topic, which is called Platon Style Portraits. Um, normally, we would be doing this in a classroom setting where we would uh, set up some of our studio lights and backdrops in order to create portraits that have really, really high contrast, bright whites, really dark, rich blacks, and lots and lots of detail. Um, this project was uh, based around a photographer named Antonio Platon. And I first discovered him through a Netflix series called Abstract, The Art of Design. Um, if you have Netflix, you might be able to find this on, on uh, your account. It's called Abstract, The Art of Design. This is from season one, episode seven. If you don't, don't worry. We're going to actually post a link to this episode on uh, Google Classroom so that you guys can watch it at your own pace. Um, but it tells a story about Platon and his approach to taking portraits of people. Um, he really wants to get to know his subjects. He wants to reveal something about their personality, their style, and he does it with a very distinct uh, photographic style like you can see here. So as you can see from that short preview, Platon really likes to focus on his subject's eyes, the details of their faces, and their body language, what they're doing with their hands, arms, legs, feet, etc. cetera. Um, on the one sheet that we gave you this week, you're gonna see lots of samples of his work, including a link to his own gallery uh, and a Pinterest board that we put up with a whole bunch of examples of some of the many celebrities and world leaders that he's photographed over the years. Um, you'll also see this uh, sample of the typical poses or styles of portraits that he produces. So one of his more common techniques is to really fill the frame with his subject's faces, getting in close so that we can see all the details of their eyes and face. He also likes to kneel down low to the ground and look up at his subjects so they look larger than life. They're big, they're dramatic, it makes their bodies look big, their heads look a little bit smaller than normal. And of course, if their hands are close to the camera, their hands are gonna look gigantic. You can see from this style as well, exaggerated hands and feet, where his subjects might reach toward the camera or be sitting on something where their feet and their hands are closer to the lens. And then we get that really exaggerated look there. He's also done some color portraiture work where he'll put a colored background behind his subjects and make them glow um, with a light source. So there's some things that we can do at home using even your camera phone to recreate this style of photography. And that's what I wanted to show you today, okay? Um, you can read more about Platon, his history, his background, and some of the things to try in your project from this week's one sheet. So what I'm gonna do is jump over to Photo P, and I've got a couple images that I took last year uh, of myself in front of a white backdrop. Now, one of the things that might be a little bit challenging for you this week is that you're gonna need to take your picture on a pretty plain background, either a plain white wall or a light colored wall, or if you can find a dark room and put a light up above you, um, either one of those will work. What we're gonna need is plain backdrops and lots of light. Whatever lamps you have, if you're near a window where you can get some sunlight on you, that's gonna help a lot this week. So I'm gonna open up two of these images in Photo P. I'm gonna go File, Open, and I'm gonna grab my first two. And I'm gonna show you how you can um, adjust these to get Platon's look. Now, for my first one on this white background, you can see that 
shooting from a low angle, I was able to make myself look larger than life. But I also saw the backdrop off the fabric. I can see part of the wall and I can see the clips from the backdrop here. You might have paintings on the wall or something else that you want to get rid of. So the first thing I'm going to do is try to hide those spaces by making this backdrop as white as possible. I'm going to first go over and get a special tool here called the burn tool, okay? And the burn tool and the dodge tool, they actually do different things. Dodge is going to make things brighter. Burn is going to make things darker, okay? So I'm going to start with the dodge tool here. And I want to set it so that it's only going to be making the highlights or the lightest parts of my picture brighter. So I'll choose highlights. I'm going to turn my exposure up to about 50%. And I'm using a brush that is around 80 pixels and a little bit soft. It's, it's more on the soft side than it is on the hard side. So it has some fluffy edges to it. And what I'm going to do is paint over this backdrop. And you can see as soon as I start painting with the dodge tool, it's making every single pixel brighter, really bright. So anything that was close to white is gonna turn to pure white. You can see that the background wall there is still not gonna go pure white yet, but we'll show you some tricks for that. And the first thing I'm gonna do is go around the outside and brighten up all of my pixels right up to the edge of the body. I wanna be careful that I'm not actually touching the body here but getting as close as possible to brighten up those edges, okay? So let me just zip around this really quick. I'll try to get in here along the head and the neck. I'll go around the outside of the hair. And that's pretty good for doing this in kind of a fast fashion. Now that got me almost pure white on the background, but I wanna hide the rest of this stuff. So in that case, I'm gonna come over and grab a paintbrush and a white, pure white paintbrush, and I'm just gonna use that to paint over anything else that I don't wanna see, okay? Because these pixels have turned pure white, I can go ahead and paint with a pure white brush and it's gonna give me a nice bright look there, okay? Now this is looking great already, I'm getting that platon look. But I can also see that my image is a little bit flat. Um, the blacks aren't really black, uh, there's some areas that are a little bit just kind of like dark gray. So I want to adjust some of that. And I'm going to use two things. The first thing I'm going to do is come over to image adjustments. And I'm going to open up a levels adjustment. Okay. And when the levels adjustment opens, you're going to see the histogram for your photo. This is the whites that are in the picture. This is the grays that are in the picture, and this is the blacks. And from this graph, I can tell I don't really have any pure black. You can see that what I really have is a lot of dark gray, but nothing that's pure black. So I'm gonna take this black slider and I'm gonna move it towards that graph till the black starts to get a little bit darker. And that's already making my uh, contrast a lot better here, okay? Um, if you notice that you didn't really have any whites, which I, I have plenty of white in this, but if I turn this down a little bit, I can even brighten those whites up a little bit more. And then I can decide what I want to do with the grays. Do I want the grays to be darker or lighter? I'm going to actually darken them up just a tad bit here. Okay. So cool. Now I've got that heavy contrast against the white. Next thing I'm going to do is I want to bring out some of this great detail in the fabric that I'm wearing. I've got lots of like, uh, roughness in this denim. So I'm going to come up to the filter menu and I'm going to choose uh, from the sharpen filters something called unsharp mask. And what this filter does is it's going to allow me to boost the detail in the picture. Okay, You can already see the effect it had there just when I applied it. What I do is I turn the amount way up to like 120, 140 percent. And then if I set my radius around three to five pixels, it's gonna bring out all of the little detail that's in that picture. Now, depending on what you're using to take your, your photos, you might wanna go a little bit less or a little bit more, okay? Your camera phone might uh, not have as many pixels as my DSLR did. So play around with this until it looks right. You don't want it to look overly gritted, gritty. You just wanna see all that detail. So I'm gonna hit okay. I'm gonna go back out full screen 
This is looking awesome. Uh, last thing I'm going to do is crop it. So I'll take my crop tool. I'm going to set it to a fixed ratio of five by seven, okay, which is a pretty standard photo size. And what that's going to let me do is just crop this a little bit closer to the body so there's not all that white space up above. And I'll go ahead and check it. And boom, this one is looking awesome. I might even finish it off with a little black border here and take my black rectangle. We'll say uh, no fill, but give me a black outline of about 30 pixels. Okay, put that in there, 30 pixels. And I'll go ahead and draw a border. Boom. If I want, I can turn that up a little bit more. Let's see if we go a little bit wider. That's good. Okay, cool, cool. So now I've got a pretty awesome uh, Platon style portrait in that style. Now for a white one, I could go ahead and save this as a JPEG. If I wanna do it with the blacks, I'm just gonna kind of reverse my settings here. Um, you can see that I went a little bit off that black background. So I'll just do the same thing I did before, but with black instead of white. I'm going to take a black paintbrush. I'm going to fill in any weird parts of the backdrop that I don't want to see. And then I'm going to use, instead of my dodge tool, this time I'm going to use the burn tool. Burn tool is going to make everything darker. Okay. So I select burn tool. I'm going to select shadows this time. And anything I paint with this black brush, you can see already, it is darkening that backdrop and making it a really nice inky black, okay? I'm gonna open up my uh, image adjustments levels and I can see from this histogram, it's pretty much the reverse problem that I had on the other one. I've got a ton of black, hardly any gray, and then no real white. So I'm gonna pull the white slider this way to brighten up my image and give it that nice bright light coming down from above, okay? Finally, I'm gonna go to my filter menu. I'm gonna choose sharpen, unsharp mask. It should remember my settings from the last photo. Yeah, looking good. I got all that grittiness. I got all the detail in the fabric. I'll hit okay. And let's see what we got. Yeah, that's looking cool. I think I want to draw a little bit of attention to the arms, legs, and fists in this. So I'm going to take my dodge tool. Remember, that one makes it brighter. I'm going to select the midtones this time since these are mostly grays. And I'm going to turn my exposure down to about 25%. Okay. And as I brush, you're going to see that arm and these jeans start to brighten up a little bit. So they just stand out from that shadowy background and give me a little bit more detail. Maybe I'll do the same to the neck here a little bit. Okay. So play around with it. You're really going for grittiness. You're going for high contrast, really dramatic lighting. So play around with your light sources. Use a lamp. Use your cell phone light if you've got it. You can photograph a family member uh, a friend if you see them, or if you want to do this yourself and you can get somebody that kind of help you with the light, go for it. Let's see what you guys come up with. And of course, when you're done, you want to just go in, export it as a JPEG, and don't forget to name your files. Last name, first name, Platon Portraits, okay? So I hope that was a good overview of what we're going to try to do this week, guys. If you have questions, as always, you can reach me in the Hangout or send me an email. All right, good luck, and we will check in with you during the week.